Okay, so welcome everyone to the May um, Mapathon. Um, if people want to get started in mapping straight away, then I'm putting the task number in the chat. It's 7133. Um, but let's start with some introductions. Um, so, Eric, do you want to start? Awesome. Um, thank you so much, Janet. Um, my name is Eric Tamba Mnyari, and I'm currently serving as Youth Mappers Regional Ambassador. And yeah, in Youth Mappers have also um, taken part in trying to collaborate with different um, OSM communities. So I'm happy to be also working with Janet from Map and so many chapters in Tanzania as well. IRDP, Shaban from the Doma, Harry Kasuga and many more. So yeah, thank you so much. Brilliant. Um, and maybe a bit later, you can talk a bit more about your role as the Youth Mapper Ambassador. Um, yeah. Sh Shivani, do you want to go next? OK, thank you, Janeti. <clears throat> My name is Shaban Magawila uh, from Dodoma. Uh, here, I'm supervising the activity of IRIP Youth Mappers here in Dodoma. So we try to, to train the youth, new, new youth members, members of ARP, but also we try to work with our communities uh, to, to see if they have a problem and the, we're trying to track their problem uh, to, 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 uh, to other stakeholders so they can see if they can solve the community problem. So, so far now, now we have a project which we uh, we are operating here at Nadani Wadi here here in Dodoma. So uh, we try to to seek the problems of the community. I think the simple introduction. Maybe you can. Thank you. Thank you, Shabani. And if people have got any links um, or the, or they want to also introduce themselves in the chat, then please do so. And if you want to start mapping. With mapping seven one three three, um, Amor, do you want to go next? Amor, can you um, unmute yourself? Okay, well, let's go to Harry then. Oh, oh sorry, go on, Amor. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me. My network is not stable here, but I hope you can hear me. Yep. Uh, my name is Amuro Nyarosi. Um, I'm working with Open Map Development Tanzania. Uh, it's an organization which is based in Mikochen Dar es Salaam, uh, which basically promotes uh, community mapping projects uh, across Tanzania. Uh, and I'm working here as a EIS and data manager and also um, project manager to the uh, to the micro grant project, which uh, I hope some of you have already had, which uh, is, is now ongoing here in Tanzania. So um, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Amor. If you want to post some links in the chat, that would be great. And perhaps we can hear a bit more about the micro grants later. Um, Chul Chulwe, do you want to go next? Um, okay, all right, Harry, do you want to go next? Oh, hi everyone. Um, my name is Harry Kasunga, uh, working with Hope and Cry to Map. Um, I'm happy to, but I mean, we're also working with Set Core Youth Mapa in Gumsorongeti. So, yeah, I'm happy to join, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, Sharif. Um, hello. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay. My name is Sharif uh, from uh, from Africa. And I'm uh, here at the Shopping Center in our series, Mapa. And they also power the plan and uh, yeah, and the uh, kind of plan that we have uh, in this entire. Okay, thank you. I'm not quite sure which chapter you're from. Maybe you can write it in the chat. 
Um, Tade? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tade Robert Nyungira. I'm working with Plant Village Organization in Kasuru District, Kigoma, Tanzania. I'm so glad to be part of this. Thank you. Welcome, and uh, thank you, Sharif from Sousa. Um, and I'm not sure if there is anyone else from Sousa. I was hoping that Raya was going to be here, but hopefully she'll join. Um, okay, yeah, Yamikani. Um, hello, everyone. Can you get me? Yep. Okay, my name is Yamikani Daka. I'm a Copper Belt University student under the Copper Belt University's student youth mappers. Thank you for... Uh, open uh, university? No, it's... It's a, no, it's not a, it's, it's not an open university. It's a university in Zambia, Copper Belt University. Oh, Zambia. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, and Jack, oh, I think Jacqueline hasn't got um, audio. Okay. Um, and Ch Chulwe, do you want to say anything? I don't. Hello, hello, everyone. Can you get me? Hello, can you get me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, uh, my name is Chulwe. I'm Mama. I'm. Uh, from Zambia also, and I'm uh, from the Copper Belt University. Apparently, I'm working with HOT and um, under the Local Impact Governance Project in here in Zambia. Uh, we've been invited by Eric Kamba, who is apparently our regional ambassador. So he's a colleague of mine, Yamikani Daka. We are actually from the same institution. So we thought we should come in and join and don't be late one or two things. Thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. Um, so I think we're waiting for Mariam from Sousa, who's going to present. Um, but in the meantime, um, uh, we've got um, Ezekiel, do you want to um, introduce yourself? Okay. My name is Ezekiel Edgar Chiariro from Sakoyen University of Agriculture. I was an uh, assistant chairperson at St. Kosa Youth Mappers. Thank you. Oh, very welcome. You're very welcome. Um, do, do you want to say a little bit about the activities that you've been doing at uh, Sakoyen? Okay. Uh, in the subconscious mappers, uh, we are doing uh, several activities, uh, especially uh, providing pro providing uh, different uh, trainings to our colleagues about mapping OSM, open city map. Yeah, like that. Okay. Um, welcome. So, uh, um, welcome to. Hidaya and Raya, um, who, um, so Hidaya, are you from Sousa as well? Do you want to introduce yourself, Hidaya? Okay, yes, I'm from Sousa. I'm a member of Sousa Youth Mappers, but I'm a graduate uh, for Bachelor Information Technology Application and Management. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. You're very welcome. And welcome, um, Raya. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Miss Janet. Hello, everyone. My name is Raya Idris Ahmada, an assistant lecturer at SUSA, but also youth map, SUSA Youth Mapper's mentor, as well as a regional ambassador for the Everywhere Maps initiative. Thanks, it's nice to meet you all. I can see some of them, uh, I know the names, I know them, maybe we have met somewhere or have talked sometime. Yeah, so yeah, that's it. Thank you. 
Great. So, Raya, are you going to present um, about your work at SUSE? Uh, actually, uh, my colleague was uh, to present. Okay, um, where is your colleague? Uh, we can't hear you now. So um, while we're working out about um, who's going to present about Sousa, um, er Eric, do you want to talk Give a bit of an overview about youth mappers and um, what they um, what you've been doing as a youth mapper ambassador. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Janet. Um, and if, do you want to share your screen and maybe show? Yeah, that? sure. Um, I'm going yeah. to make you a co-host. Hang on. Yeah. Okay. Let me just do that in a minute. Um, and in the meantime, if anyone has any questions, then please do um, either put your hand up or um, put your um, or write the question in the chat. Yeah. Um. So I hope everyone can see my screen. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um. So. Um, to tap in the Youth Mappers website, everything that Youth Mappers have been doing or are currently doing, or opportunities that are available in, I mean, it, uh, for Youth Mappers are in the Youth Mappers website. So just go through that while sharing some things um, which are quite interesting about Youth Mappers um, from the website. So um, here um, in the website, you can find the chapter listing like how many chapters are, um, let's say in Tanzania or the chapter that is close to you um, as a student, or you can try learning from them as well as, um, uh, let's say, um, want also to have a chapter in your university. You can ask them how they did it, but um, as regional ambassadors, we are here to support um, those um, activities that include affiliating new chapters. So um, currently um, in Tanzania, we had 17, but in additional of two um, chapters, one from Jordan University, which has been announced in the previous newsletter and um, a university from Duse. Um, yeah, this one, the rest from University College of Education, which is also a new chapter. So um, there are a lot of opportunities actually in youth mappers as a student or as an alumni. Um, you can have them, um, and this can be, let's say, fieldwork programs that will be announced. And currently, we have um, what we call leadership fellowship um, uh, opportunities that um, universities chapter students can um, come together and share their leadership skills or how they, um, they, can, they can be mentored throughout um, having this leadership and um, leadership skills. And also um, there are opportunities that include research fellowship, which will also be announced. Um, fieldwork program that also um, SM Corsa Youth Map has had this opportunity to um, get some grants to do this um, fieldwork programs. Also, um, I think Raya will, uh, will, will also share something on Everywhere She Maps um, initiative that promotes the female participation in youth mappers chapters. And yeah, we normally insist on, um, as a student, try to share your experiences um, while you're, um, you, you're getting involved with youth mappers chapters um, through blog writing. So here are the list of amazing blogs that people share about their experiences or what is, um, and what is currently being done by these students um, uh, around the globe. So here, for instance, is an amazing um, blog that CloudMap hosted and had an internship uh, program to, to, to some female um, students. And yeah, it was something that you can um, try reading it and uh, see um, some more insights about the program as well. So also Ezekiel is in the call, I think, shared this just recently. He showed story about youth mappers 
yeah so from there you can get um a lot so also as regional ambassadors uh you can also find the list of regional ambassadors from this tab here and yeah as regional ambassadors we are working um to to i mean to support the activity that your mappers are doing so whatever you guys are doing or think um that you want anything that you are you are thinking of um of conducting let's say a training or you want to have a physical event there's one way or another that we can support those activities so we normally like to hear from the chapters that um what are are their privileges or what are they trying to work on and um, normally from there we can start having that conversation and collaborate on what they want to do so we, we we are not fully mandatory about the uh, over the chapters, but we really want to hear from the chapters. So um, by saying that, I think um, uh, I also want to um, share this. Let's say we have the activity map here. So from the activity map, um, you can tell like um, let's say what is happening. Where are youth mappers trying to map? uh where, where where are the activities let's say i'm um, sorry um let me just hear sorry here yeah, in the resource library sorry um so from the resource library as well you can have um some um tutorials or um uh, resources that you can you're maybe you're interested about and here it's what i wanted to share here in the activity um calendar you can find different activities let's say um what's happening currently or that in any kind in any um chapter along the uh, network so um with that i think i will see more questions and um, that will be good and i know i like to answer questions um from the youth mappers about the youth mappers and how you can get started, how you can get uh, more engaged in the network, all that, how, or how you can get uh, more support from regional ambassadors. But the hint is that we normally like to hear from the chapters. Yeah. Thank you so much, Janet. Thank you, any questions from anyone? So, um, and welcome, uh, Robert um, from ACT. Um, do you want to just introduce yourself, Robert? Uh, yes, Janet. Um, thanks first for um, a fast opportunity actually to get into the forum. I've been hoping to get another chance, but it's been quite tight. Uh, my name is Robert Mafie. I'm the director of Affordable Computers and Technology for Tanzania. We do support um, schools to utilize ICT in enhancing learning. And uh, we're proud that we have um, uh, uh, over 450 schools supported so far, and thousands have been reached through ICT um, training. So um, it's always my interest to learn about uh, nothing and uh, what uh, Janet and team are doing is a great job. Um, and to get an opportunity whenever I can to learn a few things. So thank you so much for the uh, invitation and uh, welcoming me. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, everyone, as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. And um, Robert um, helped support the computers at IRDP in Mwanza. Um, so um, with that, the Youth Mapper chapter there. Right. Um, Ch Chulwe, you have a question. Yeah, yeah. just a quick one. Uh, it goes to Eric on the calendar there, the events that are added, are they added after the youth map first chapter conducting event or actually they are added as the events are happening like that or, or on their activities schedules that are they added after they happen or before they happen and and who does the adding is it is it the youth mappers or maybe it's you the regional ambassadors who add on the, on the thank you so I think you um I had you shot. Um Janet, if you heard him clearly, please. <laughs> oh um if you just repeat the question. Um yes, so I'll, can you get mm. me now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I was saying on the calendar there, on the activities that are added on the calendar. Okay. He added after the youth mappers chapter conduct the events. 
or maybe they are added before they conduct the reverse type. And uh, the yeah, other question um, was, um, okay. The other question was, uh, who adds the the activities on that? Okay. Is it yeah. is it the chapter, the chapter leaders, or it's you, the regional? But Thank you so much. Um, so um, this brings me to another um, something that I normally like to address the chapters that um, please, as a chapter, you're having those activities, please share them. So we normally share them on our social medias, right? So if you go to um, call to map, um, Instagram or um, Twitter, all that, they are trying to tell you like what is happening. So also from these mapathons, like um, we, we try to post them even in our WhatsApp so that we can um, keep track and remind people that there's this activity. So from the Youth Mapper's activity calendar, is that for instance, chapter, you're having an activity next Saturday. So you have all those set up, then in order um, people to know around the network, because Youth Mapper's is a network, so you can simply share it with the, I, I mean, I'll send the email, where youth mappers can send that or oh, okay let me just i think it's here let me just um share the screen once again yeah so um this info at youth mappers so you can send your um event there like you are planning to have this then the youth mappers communication specialist will have that on the calendar here so once it's there, also Youth Mappers um, Instagram, all that um, official page of Youth Mappers Instagram, Twitter can have that posted before the event so that um, it can be more engaging. So the one who posts that, I think it's the Youth Mappers um, communication specialist. Yeah, and um, you can simply just send your event through this um, uh, email here, info at youthmappers.org, um, yeah. So thank you if I've answered your question. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Th thank you, Eric. Um, so for the benefit of the people who are new here, if um, who, what kind of organization can be, can start a youth mapper group and what um, advice and support can they get from you and Raya if they want to do that? Yeah, so thank you so much. Um, so um, Youth Mappers works um, with universities, first of all. So it must have, uh, it, it must be a university. And um, normally we um, only, let's say the public university, um, those, those universities are, which are not for profit. So we understand that those for profit universities, we have, um, we, we don't work with um, those for profit um, universities. Then also um, some re quick requirements. So first of all, we need at least one um, student um, to, be, to be, let's say, a founding member from that university. So since maybe that university has no um, youth mapper chapter at first, so he or she can try reaching out to the regional ambassador or simply, um, let me, a quick one let me just share my screen here we have all that um so i hope everyone can see my screen so in order to participate um you just go to get started here so you can um first of all what you'll need to is to apply to join youth mappers and in this that you can affiliate your um student organization if it's already existing or just start a new chapter so from here, we have this chapter application form. So normally, um, anyone who is interested can come um, directly and fill this chapter application form. But when you're getting um, some difficulties in filling out this form, like um, what to fill in or um, some requirements before filling in this form, then um, regional ambassadors, we are here to support you. So I think, yeah, thank you, Janet. Maybe Raya can add that. Uh, good morning again, uh, everyone. Yeah, it's good morning. Yeah, actually, I think uh, it's uh, what Eric has said is um, is okay. Uh, just uh, in addition to that, I think the students uh, the the chapters are actually run by the students themselves. 
uh, with the help from the faculty advisor who is like advising advising the the chapter and making it like uh, active and alive and make sure that uh, everything is going on but it's student centered so the students are the ones who are expected to uh, to organize uh, mapping events to organize themselves there's also leadership um, in which there are like uh, five executive members for the president vice president treasurer and uh, others too so they are, they, they, they are supposed to select uh, those for their chapter. And in addition to that, for a chapter to be considered as an active chapter, uh, it has to submit uh, a report every year uh, so that uh, it documents what it has been doing, what is the impact to the society, and how many members do they have, what contributions do they have made into the open street map and the like. Yeah, I think that's uh, what I can say now. Thank you. Um, and, and also new, new and other chapters can request um, training. Is that correct? Yes, actually the regional ambassadors are there to support the establishment of chapters and conducting trainings to the new members or to the new chapters themselves. Like for us, uh, we started in 2019. And by then, I think in Tanzania, there was no um, regional ambassador. So there was uh, one regional ambassador from Uganda. By then, uh, she was called Ingrid Kintu. So she organized, she came in Zanzibar and uh, she gave us training. I mean, she gave us and the students training uh, on how to use the open street map and on how to start the chapter, how to make it active. And that's where we began. In addition, of course, the next year, I think in 2020, we also conducted a training and helped uh, Sumit University to run their chapter. So it's working like that. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so, um, Raya, if you'd like to present about your work at SUSE now, that would be wonderful. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Are you sharing the slides or? Whichever. Do you want me to do it or are you going to? Yeah, if you can do that, I think that's going to be super. Yeah. Sorry, you're, you're doing it or I'm doing it? You, you're doing it. Oh, I'm doing it. Sorry. OK. Um, oh, right. Let me find it. Okay, yes, here. Um, okay. Um, it's slideshow on the right, at the top there. Yeah, I don't use it. I use, usually use PowerPoint. Right, okay, there you go. Okay, so actually, uh, just to go uh, like a quick uh, presentation is that uh, Susan with Mappers Chemter. Uh, is a chapter at the State University of Zanzibar, which was established, uh, formed in 2019, after the end of the Resilience Academy uh, internship program uh, uh, in 2019, the first uh, interns who were out. And by then I was the Resilience Academy internship program coordinator. I can send the link later so that you can see the, the program, the Resilience Academy, because it's still continuing. And the aim of the Resilience Academy was uh, to equip the students with geospatial skills so that they can map the world. And then we heard about Suzette Mappers. So I talked with the Resilience Academy interns so that they become the, the fastest. Suzette. Sorry, can you go? Do you want to be here? Sorry, no, no, no. Back. At the, Maybe you can, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, it's okay. So from there, I uh, we found about uh, youth mappers and because the students by then had uh, some basics in GIS and geospatial uh, skills, uh, we started with them. And from there, we started to map using the, and uh, under registered the chapter and starting some activities, the awareness uh, activities. Uh, and we are trying to address uh, uh, different challenges that are across the locality in Zanzibar. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? 
And then we come up with the vision of empowering the generation of young people and energetic youth to develop uh, their skills on mapping and ability to create a resilient community. And it was uh, not that much hard because uh, the students by then had some experience in working in the field during the Resilience Academy program. And can you go to the next slide, please? Um, our mission is to share experience in learning through social technologies uh, while addressing uh, and mapping the community challenges of Zanzibar and beyond. And uh, maybe in the next slide about the, the, the activities that we are doing. Uh, the activities that we are doing is uh, more of uh, mapping. So we have been mapping community uh, complex programs such, programs, such as uh, we have uh, uh, proposed to do a project called School Mapping, which is our first uh, project in the chapter. And from there, we collaborated with the uh, other organizations like the OMDTC, and then uh, they had uh, this solid waste uh, management uh, uh, project in Zanzibar where they recruit our students to do the work. Uh, in addition to that, we also do outreach programs to the students within and outside the SUSA. So we have, we have been conducting some trainings on open, open map, uh, open data and open street map as well. And our students has also been doing uh, visualization of the data that they are collecting and all the data, open data that has been collected by different people and organizations. And in the Resilience Academy, our students have been um, participated in the visualization challenges. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, the opportunities that we got uh, uh, in this program, we have seen that our students have been exposed to the field work programs, including trainings and fellowships. Uh, in the previous year at the, at the university, we had like a, a resilience academy uh, as an internship program. But in addition to that, we also took additional students under the Suzeth mappers in which they were treated as um, uh, they were doing their industrial uh, training in that program. We also have participated and work on uh, different mapping projects, including the, the school mapping projects, uh, which was under app and uh, Susie's mappers. But in addition to that, we also, the students got um, an opportunity to work with OMDTZ under the solid waste and mix mapping project. In addition, there's also a project uh, in collaboration with UNDP Accelerator Lab and OMDTZ, in which the students were mapping the tourist sites attractions in Zanzibar, as well as uh, currently we have uh, uh, we have uh, just finished uh, uh, doing the solid waste uh, under the waste X uh, uh, project uh, under the UNDP Accelerator Lab, OMDTZ and SUSA collaboration. Uh, also, uh, the students uh, got uh, an opportunity to learn local, to get uh, local experience from experience from the community. They engage with the community during data collection, and we have seen more members uh, joining the chapter recently due to the work that we have been doing. Because at first it was really uh, hard for us to, uh, to to keep the the chapter sustainable, as more students were not aware of what Youth Mapas is, and they were not. Uh, I mean, motivated to join the chapter, but now at least we have more members each day. And we have been engaging more than 50% of female mappers in the chapter. And this, the good news is that uh, the students are only, not only coming from the SUSA, I mean, from the State University of Zanzibar, but we have been engaging some students from other universities as well, so that they at least they get exposure and they get to understand uh, the work that uh, is being conducted by SUSA Youth Mappers. Uh, uh, and next slide, please. So we have uh, been uh, helping the government to update their systems through GS solutions. For example, in the school mapping project that we are doing, uh, it's a project, it's a collaborative project uh, between uh, between the us and uh, uh, Liquid Telecom, who are interested in the data that we have been we have been, we have been collecting as well as the Ministry of Education and Vocational Training in, in Zanzibar. So uh, that is the social impact that we have been uh, achieved. Um, we have also been able to address the community uh, complex problems uh, by the maps that we have been uh, producing. 
and we have been uh, able to raise awareness to students on how to use maps and we have been able to upload the data in the open street map and we collaborate with other OSM communities uh, in Zanzibar of course and as well as uh, outside Zanzibar uh, for example in uh, Tanzanian mainland uh, the one that I'm telling you about the OMDTZ collaboration as well as uh, Liquid Telecom and UN, UNDP Accelerator Lab. And in addition to this, our students, our SUSE Youth Mappers alumni, got opportunities to, um, to, to, to get internship in different organizations. Like one of our students was uh, um, what they call uh, this, um, the OMDTZ had the internship program and she participated in that. She's called Latif Hamis. And she has been uh, doing great work and she has uh, been also communicating that uh, into school levels because she has been going to uh, secondary schools and introduce uh, the work to the, to the students as well. And we have also collaborated with the other organization like uh, Zanzibar, Zaveco, Zanzibar Environment uh, 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 Organization, in which we, we, we had an opportunity to, 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 to conduct an open data day together. Uh, next slide, please. So, so far we have uh, trained more than 100 students uh, from SUSA and uh, outside organizations. We have accomplished school mapping project, which is uh, almost uh, in the, uh, we are finishing the project uh, recently. And we also was featured on mapping tourist sites attractions in Zanzibar, a project uh, which was aiming at uh, unveil the tourist sites in Zanzibar so that uh, uh, more tourists could come and could uh, expose what is uh, available in Zanzibar. We don't, we've also been featured on the um, solid waste management project in Zanzibar. And Currently, also far more than 50% of the girls have been engaged in the uh, mapping activities. So we have uh, at least um, achieved to motivate uh, more girls into this uh, kind of work because before uh, most of the girls were, were not uh, ready to join the movement as they were seeing that the work is only for, for male students. Yeah, so. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, I think uh, these are our partners. Of course, SUSA, UNDP, we have Open Development Tanzania. Of course, uh, Liquid Telecom is missing there, but they're also our partner, of course, and the Ministry of Education and Vocational Training in Zanzibar is also one of our partners. But in addition to that, we have seen like uh, the students um, exposed to, especially to 20, 21st century school skills, which uh, basically, um, uh, it's not that they don't get it in class, but uh, in, 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 at the university, uh, the, the teachers or the, the, the lecturers are focusing more on uh, um, giving them like the knowledge or the technical knowledge that they require. But in these extracurricular activities, the students are exposed, they get to network, they get to know how to work with other people, uh, both internally and externally and our students have been try we have been like motivating the students to apply for different internship uh, um, opportunities that are available inside Tanzania and outside Tanzania so it's uh, something like it's an such an experience to the students it's something that uh, uh, for now they have seen uh, like uh, it's something that uh, everyone wants to be part of uh, part of the initiative. I think the last slide is uh, Santini Sana. And thank you for listening. If you have any question or suggestion, yeah, I'm here to answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raya. That was amazing. Um, so <clears throat> I have a, a couple of questions. You said that students from outside SUSE can um, participate in some of the activities. Um, yeah. Um, so they can they can do that remotely, and can that be from anywhere in Tanzania or even beyond? Uh, well, uh, depending on the nature that uh, of our work, uh, so far we have been engaging them face to face. 
because most of the projects that we are doing is a field work project. Um, but we are planning to, like you say, like to include uh, others even in a remote uh, environment. Like, uh, I mean, to extend our activities, like doing more online training. We want to share our work with others. So we are planning to do that shortly. But for now, most of them are like, they come physically and we, we work with them physically. Yeah. Great. And I think you did some work around um, mangroves. Is that correct? Uh, well, yeah, actually, that was uh, part of uh, my colleague's work, but we are also, I mean, the Swiss map has had a small part to play around that. Uh, and well, the idea was to like uh, map the, the existing, um, I mean, the existing features that are available, but that project uh, is basically uh, more feasible to do it in drones. Because uh, of, uh, if you if you look uh, on how the mangroves are looked, where the mangroves are located, it's really hard for us like to go physically there and map all the, the place. So they are mostly using the drones to map uh, the location. So my colleagues at Suza are doing that project. Yeah. Very interesting. And then are. Uh, uh... Is the Youth Mapper chapter involved in processing any of the drone imagery at all? Uh, well, uh, for now, I can say not uh, really, but uh, we, we, we are planning to have uh, like uh, training because we, want, we, we don't want our students just to be able to like uh, do the feedback or maybe collect the data. Now, what we are trying to do is uh, uh, expanding their knowledge, expanding what they have already been exposed to. Uh, now the data is there, uh, we want them to be able to analyze the data, to do data visualization, to process, as you say, uh, using different technologies. And for now, of course, we are just motivating them to like join online trainings. There are some uh, opportunities that are shared within our uh, within uh, Youth Mapper's mailing list. And uh, there was uh, this uh, drone certification and most of them have applied. I think they're going to start soon, uh, but we are trying to expose the students, some of the students who are interested to get the knowledge of uh, doing the, I mean, to process the collected data using the drones. Yeah. Wonderful. Um I don't know if you or Eric can answer if, I mean, are there any Youth Mapper chapters in Tanzania that have been using drones yet? So I'm Raya. <laughs> okay, for, um, for, for, for my perspective, I'll, yeah, I've just heard it from um, Raya's side and Susa Youth Mappers through the um, Open Skies Fellowship Initiative by um, Open Map Development mm -hmm. Tanzania. So yeah, um, from that aspect, I think there's somewhere to also to work around and yeah, and maybe extend these efforts to other chapters. Thank you. Okay, yeah, so still, still um, early days for that then. And sorry, and, and Raya, the training that you said people have applied for, the drone certification, has, has that started yet? Mm, well, I don't think so. I need to check that with my students because uh, I asked, I saw, I think it has been shared in the, I'm not so sure which groups, but around some group has been shared. So I, I just asked them to, requested them to like apply for it, but I don't think if it has started. And I think it's not based in Tanzania, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I think it's, yeah, it's not in Tanzania. Thank you. And you, you mentioned about the Mapping Schools project. As it, was that in Zanzibar only or in the mainland too? Mm, actually for us, it was uh, because of budget constraint and stuff, we had to do it in Zanzibar alone. But as far as I understand, I think uh, you and other organizational or something what 
planning to extend that to Tanzanian mainland as well? Or because yeah, well, um, <clears throat> there have been many yeah. different um, school mapping projects, including yeah. um, Crowd to Map. Um, so it would be good to have some more, you know, joined up um, analysis mm -hmm. of what data is still is missing from mm -hmm. um, still from OpenStreetMap, because certainly we've done a lot of work on that, mm -hmm. okay. as have others, I think. Um, and you mentioned about um, an, an internship with OMDTZ. Um, mm -hmm. is, is that an ongoing project or is it um, that other people can apply for or, or is it finished now? Uh, yeah, I think open because maybe Eric will help me, but I think it's an ongoing project because uh, uh, Latifa, the one I mentioned, was uh, previously uh, uh, intern, but they also um, they also gave like uh, they also like um, asked for people to apply again. I had um, this year. I'm not so sure if they have selected, but I think it's going. It's on. It's ongoing, and everyone can can apply. Yeah. Maybe okay. Eric can add to that. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, like I said it correctly, I think they um they announced it this year again. Mm -hmm. And um, let me just check it on um on the TZ website if Amol was still on the call, I think could answer that correctly. Yeah, let me just check it out and maybe if I have that drink, I can post it on the um call. Okay, thank you. That would be great. And it will be interesting to know what um you said Latifa was going to different schools as part of that program. Um what was she doing in the schools, um, Raya? Do you know? Yeah, actually, she was uh, trying to explain uh, her work with OMDTZ, but uh, also she was explaining the importance of the maps and how they are collecting. Because she was doing, I, I think she was doing um, something to do with the drainage and flooding. Okay. She, she had like modeling simulation. So she was explaining the project to the students and she was explaining about the open map and the open street map, uh, mapping process and, and all that. So that at least she, you know, now the GIS, it's a crucial uh, knowledge. And mm -hmm. um, it, 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 of course it has to start um, like ICT, it's coming like an ICT, like everybody has to know about something about GIS. So there's an initiative like uh, to also um, impart this knowledge to the, to the secondary school students so that when they come to the university, at least they know mm -hmm. what, uh, what uh, this GIS and geospatial technologies it's all about. Yeah. Thank you. So do you know, or does anybody know about any resources um, on introduction to GIS that are suitable for secondary school students? Well, I, I, maybe somebody can help me with that. I don't know if, yeah, Eric? Well, yeah, I've heard of them, but um, it will um, require me to just have a set of that and share it with, after this call, I think with everyone in the call. So I'll okay. probably share with that, Janet. Brilliant, and then I can send it to everybody um, that registered um, and so on with the yeah, recording. Sure. Because I know, I think Robert does um, IT training in secondary schools. Um, mm -hmm. So I think Robert, you would be interested in, in incorporating something about GIS in that. Definitely, definitely. That would be really something interesting um, as you work with different schools. So if there's something that would be relevant then to push forward the mapping of schools, that would be really a great, uh, a great thing to do, yeah. Great, so it would be, be wonderful to partner with you um, on that. Um, yeah. Just to explain what, what we've done about mapping schools. So there was government open data about school location, which we put into OpenStreetMap. 
And then we've also been training teachers um, to use organic maps to map the local, which is a free smartphone app um, to map the points of interest around their schools. And this is quite a nice activity with students as well. Um, and previously, we've also used um, field papers. Um, I don't know if anybody here has used field papers and wants to say a little bit about it. I think Harry has, um, and Shabani. Um, does anyone want to say that? Okay, I'm putting the link in the chat. Uh, Shabani, Shabani, you're muted. Uh, yes, Janet. Yeah, do you want to explain how we used field papers in the past or not? Okay. Okay, so Janet, so maybe can I share the screen? Oh, yeah. Um... Okay. I think everybody see my screen. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah. This field paper is one of the technique which you use for doing data correction and the uh, doing map to a local area. And the, it, it perform uh, the same as the ODK, but the, what what the, the different here we have to uh, to print the papers. We have to print the map uh, into the sheet in order to if you you are, you are going to do the data correction at the local place, you have to to go with your piece of paper and then you are going to confirm uh, the added area and the area which are not added. Yeah, so the field paper is help for the local area. Is some some area with a maybe you can go to the interior area, which uh, maybe there is a have there is no uh, electricity. Maybe uh, the issue of networking is a problem to that area. So uh, the technique of field paper will help us to uh, to do data correction in those areas. So. After you have been, uh, first, first you have to create an account as we did in the OpenStreetMap. So you can go here to the login and create a, an account if you don't have. Uh, if you have, you have to uh, just log in. So you have to register. After then, you, you need to, 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 to check uh, maybe let me sign in. Don't think. Uh, uh, okay, you can sign up. And then put your email. -y. Okay, so after you submit, you sign up, you can go and confirm to your email. After then, you need to go to the login details here, uh, login page, have to put your username. Yeah, I think the, I, I've forgotten my, my password, but the, what I need to, to say that this is a field paper. After you're creating the account, you need to go to the, your area and you will find the area that you are going, you need to, to, to do some mapping and it will perform all kinds of mapping, like drawing the road, but also to put the, some details 
uh, about the institution, institution found in a particular area. So after you, you print your paper, you need to go with your piece of paper to the site, and then you're going uh, to confirm uh, in that piece of paper, uh, we having what we call this barcode. I mean the barcode. This barcode will help you after 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 do data correction. You will send back your sheet to the the one who will will use that uh, field paper uh, to put the data to the OSM server. So there is a data corrector, but also there is a one who will deal with uh, with inputting those data that you corrected to the OSM server. Yeah, this is a simple introduction of fulfilled paper. Thank you, Shabani. Um, we, we've used it um, particularly with some schools. So they've printed out, or you know, we've set up an atlas for them and they've printed out um, showing um, the locality of the school on paper and then um, the students have gone to certain places and added the places that are missing. Um, so it's it's quite a nice activity for schools because it doesn't need any technology. And then, as Shabani mentioned, you can set it so that um, you, you can scan it and send it to an advanced mapper that can then upload the, um, uh, the information. So any questions about that? or anything else. Okay, um, so maybe um, we, we're almost um, finishing anyway. So Hello? do people ha have any general um, questions or any suggestions from what they would like to um, do next month? Uh, sorry, Janet. Yeah. Uh, maybe I can proceed with uh, to yep. show them how to create the address mm -hmm. if we have the time. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So this is a, a address that you are going to to create. It's depending on the size of your area. So after you enter into the field uh, field papers website, first of all, you need to. To, to write the name of your address. Maybe we can say that uh, this is a word, uh, maybe Mwanza or any name that you uh, define your area or your address. And then maybe you can keep the, this print note if you, you have. Here you are, you are going to, into the greedy layout, you can go to, to, uh, to define the size of your, uh, your paper and you can choose the base map which kind of base map you are going to use either it is the open street map but she or saturated image earlier photos so after you have to choose your earlier accent so you can go, it is better to use first the uh, base map, OSM base map, which is very good. Maybe let's say, find somewhere, okay. okay. This one. So you have to define this area. And then I have to say that I will change maybe the base map to saturate label. So this is, it will show you a uh, number of pages that it is going to be printed. So now we have, uh, I mean, six pages, which are going to, uh, to, to print. So it, 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 will, it will print the pages according to your area size. So if you need to print uh, much, much papers, you can add, you can add and minimize it. Yeah. So then 
after you make sure that this is your area is covered properly by, the, by your grid, now you can go and uh, make your address. So you can make your address. So it will start, start the rendering. It will take uh, time. According to your to your size of your area. So after re rendering have been done, uh, the PDF will be created. So you will take the PDF and then going to print to the stationer. Then you will go to to start moving by using that that uh, piece of paper. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe if there is a any question about? Thank you, Shivani. Any any questions? Okay. So, any suggestions for um, June's um, session? And otherwise, we, maybe um, Eric, we can talk um, afterwards about that. Sorry, Madam. I have a. Uh question for Mr. Shabani. Go, go ahead. Okay, welcome. Okay, Mr. Shabani, I'm a backer from Suza Youth Mapa. Uh, yes. My question is, uh, is on that atlas. So maybe I have data, some data I want to put on that atlas. It can be possible. Okay, uh, this address, it will help you to add the field data that it, because uh, we are doing a field data by confirming that a given feature is really found in, in that position. So after you take the piece of paper here, maybe this, this A1, when you go in the, in the work of A1 paper, you will make sure that if this is a building, this is a building. So what is this building? Is this a school or is this a shop? So you have to confirm by using the paper. So you, will, you maybe you will give the number, maybe one. And in the, uh, in the other side, you will define that one, it represents a school. So then after you have do this, you will send it to the one who uh, will import that data into the OSM server. I think you get me? Yes, I got you, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I've, I've put a link to a video of, of further information about field papers. Um, and I'll also put that with the recording. So um, any other questions or comments or requests? Okay, well, thank you very much um, to Raya and the people from Sousa for their fantastic presentation. Thank you, Shivani, for that uh, great information about field papers and to Eric um, for your um, <coughs> uh, fantastic information about youth mappers and everyone for participating and um, hope to see you in June. Thank you very much. <laughs>